The learning objectives for 4.3 are explain how matter flows between trophic levels and among ecosystems, explain how water cycles globally, identify the importance of the main nutrient cycles, and explain how nutrient availability affects primary productivity. All organisms contain the compounds water, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. These compounds are mainly made of the elements oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Organisms cannot make these elements. These elements, like all matter, can never be created or destroyed. Matter flows from one trophic level to another. Matter also moves by being recycled within and among ecosystems. These cycles of elements and compounds are called the biogeochemical cycles. The processes that occur in biogeochemical cycles are biological processes that occur in the biosphere and are any activities done by organisms, such as photosynthesis. Geological processes occur in the geosphere and include volcanoes, earthquakes, and formation of rock. Chemical and physical pro processes mostly occur in the hydrosphere or atmosphere and include the formation of precipitation, the flow of water, and lightning. Human activities that affect cycles of matter on a global scale include the burning of fossil fuels and forest. Water cycles among the hydrosphere, atmosphere, and geosphere, sometimes outside the biosphere and sometimes in it. Water enters the atmosphere as water vapor when it evaporates from bodies of water. Water, water evaporates from leaves through transpiration. Water vapor condenses into droplets that form clouds. Droplets fall as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. On land, precipitation flows along the surface as runoff. Runoff enters streams and rivers and flows into oceans or lakes. Water enters the soil as groundwater and then enters plants through the roots. Water then re-enters the atmosphere through evaporation and transpiration. Human activity, such as cutting a forest, affects the water cycle in an ecosystem. Nutrients are elements that an organism needs to sustain life. Every organism needs nutrients to build tissues and carry out life's functions. Like water, 
Nutrients pass through organisms and the environment through biogeochemical cycles. The cycles that carry carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus through the biosphere are vital for life. Oxygen participates in the carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycles by combining with these elements. Photosynthesis releases oxygen gas. Oxygen is also used in cellular respiration. Carbon is a major component of organic compounds, including carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Fossil fuels are made of carbon. Animal skeletons containing carbon as calcium carbonate. Carbon dioxide is an important gas in the atmosphere. Photosynthesis removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Respiration returns carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Producers use carbon dioxide to make organic compounds that are consumed by heterotrophs. Decomposers break down organic compounds, releasing carbon and other nutrients to the environment. Not all carbon is released by decomposition. Remains of primary producers buried millions of years ago were transformed into fossil fuels. Dissolved carbon dioxide in the ocean can form carbonates that combine with skeletons of marine organisms that form rocks. These rocks are driven deep underground by geological activity. Heat and volcanic eruptions release this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. <coughs> Carbon dioxide is exchanged between the atmosphere and oceans through chemical and physical processes. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can dissolve in rainwater, forming a weak acid. When humans burn coal, oil, natural gas, or even forest, we return carbon stored over millions of years to the atmosphere in a very short time. Such human activity has a large impact on the carbon cycle. More carbon dioxide in the atmosphere adds to the greenhouse effect. All organisms require nitrogen to make amino acids and nucleic acids. Most nitrogen is in the form of nitrogen gas in the atmosphere. Nitrogen containing compounds such as ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate are in the biosphere, geosphere, and hydrosphere. Nitrogen gas is abundant, but most organisms can't use it. Only certain types of bacteria can convert nitrogen gas into ammonia through a process called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen-fixing bacteria live in soil and on the roots of certain plants. 
Other bacteria convert ammonia into nitrite and nitrate, which can be used by primary producers. When consumers eat producers, these nitrogen compounds are reused. Decomposers release nitrogen compounds from animal waste and dead organisms. Some bacteria obtain energy by converting nitrates into nitrogen gas, which is released into the atmosphere in a process called denitrification. Human involvement in the nitrogen cycle increases, increased greatly when chemists discovered a process to use nitrogen gas from the atmosphere to make chemicals that are used in fertilizer. Humans now use this process to fix more nitrogen than all natural processes combined. Phosphorus is necessary for molecules such as nucleic acids. Phosphorus does not cycle through the atmosphere. Phosphorus is found as phosphates in the geosphere and dissolved in water in the hydrosphere. If ample sunlight and water are available, the primary productivity of an ecosystem may be limited by the availability of nutrients. Any nutrient whose supply limits productivity is called a limiting nutrient. Plant growth can be limited by the supply of one or more nutrients. Nutrient limitation is why farmers use fertilizers. Most fertilizers contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Micronutrients such as calcium, manganese, magnesium, sulfur, iron, and manganese are sometimes included in small amounts. Nitrogen is often the limiting nutrient in the ocean. In freshwater, phosphorus is often the limiting nutrient. Runoff from rain may contain fertilizer from farms. This delivers a large amount of limiting nutrients into bodies of water. This stimulates producers such as algae to grow more than normal causing what is called an algal bloom. Severe algal blooms can disrupt the functioning of an ecosystem.